So 2020 has already been crazy, but how does the FAA wish you a happy new year? With a 470 page final ruling on the remote ID. Stick around, I'll tell you what's going on. Hey everybody, it's Charles Draco Ariel. So the FAA has finally released their final ruling on the remote ID and it's 470 pages. Now today, they also released information on night operations and flights over people. And that also included a little bit about recertification for 107 pilots. Now on the remote ID side, these were two separate rulings that they've done. One ruling was for the remote ID. The other ruling is for flights over people and night operations. So let's focus on the remote ID right now. I've been going through it. And like I said, it's 470 pages long. And when you read into it, you know, more than 50,000 people voiced their opinions on the remote ID. Did it help? Did it not help? I think it helped a little bit. There are some changes that have been made, but we, I've got a little printout here so I can run over some of the main points that are in this new remote ID ruling. All right, so one of the biggest things is, what does this mean for us flying drones? Well, with the remote ID, one, remember this whole thing that you had to be connected to the internet in order to fly? Well, that's gone. Um, internet transmission requirements have been eliminated. So you're not going to have to be connected to the internet, which for me, flying out in the desert, in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, that's a relief because there's no internet, there's no cell service in those areas. Okay, so what are going to be the requirements to fly a drone under this new remote ID? Well, the FAA has given us three options. First option is going to be to operate a drone that has remote ID built in for not only broadcasting the information from the drone, but also from the control station. That's one option. Second option is going to be to add a module to your drone. Now, this is still new. This is just coming out. So I don't know if this is going to be something you're going to Velcro or actually permanently mount to your drone or if this is something that somebody else could even take from you once you've registered it and go do something silly with it and you're the one to get some trouble but an option is going to be to have an external module that will broadcast the remote id now the third option which is just kind of silly to me but it's what what it is is going to be to operate your drone that does not have remote ID at a specific FAA recognized identification area. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be where the model aircraft people go out and fly their model aircraft or city parks or I'm not real sure. I haven't read into all 470 pages yet. So I still need a little bit of time to read through everything. Because like I said, 470 pages breaking down everything for remote ID. So one of the questions I had was, what about these drones that are under 0.55 pounds? You know, like the Mini 2 that just came out. Are they going to be required to have remote ID? Are your FPVs going to be required to have remote ID? So when I dug a little further, and this is exactly what it says. Under the final rule, all unmanned aircraft required to register must remotely identify. 
And operators have three options, which we've gone over those three options. You can either purchase a drone with remote ID, add a module, or fly in a designated zone. But for UAs weighing less than 0.55 pounds or less, remote identification is only required if the UA is operated under the rules that require registration such as part 107. So unless you're using a mini, mini two as a 107 operator, because a 107 operator has to register all their drones no matter what. But if you're recreational and you're running one of these drones that are under the 0.55 pounds, according to what's out, what the, I've read so far, you're not going to have to have remote identification on them. So if your FPV is under 0.55, according to this, and you're not using it as 107, you do not have to register it. You do not have to have remote ID. Now, don't worry. You don't have to have this done by next week. It's not like this is going into effect on the first. They have only filed the um, final ruling with the Federal Register right now. It usually takes a few days to a week or two before it's finalized and input into the Federal Register. Now, once that does happen, operational rules take effect 30 months after the effective date of this rule. So it sounds like manufacturers are going to have at least Two and a half years to get everything in line. Two and a half years so these modules can be designed and you can start purchasing them. And it also gives you time. Two and a half years, you're probably going to upgrade several of your drones by then. I mean, I'm usually buying a new drone. <laughs> yeah, the cat. I'm usually buying a new drone every 12 to 18 months. I've got a new drone. In fact, I believe the um, Air 2 has already got more than likely everything it needs for the um, remote ID built in. Probably didn't market it that way, but I'm sure it does. It's got the ADS-B in it, so it can pick up um, other aircraft. Now, as for the night operations and flying over people, that's a whole nother ruling that has come out. And it's quite a bit of information in it. It's almost 300 pages that I still need to go through. Changing some rules, but still got to dig into them to see exactly. I mean, the flights over people. One thing I'm noticing in all of it is no exposed propellers. So nothing that can lacerate somebody's hand or face if it was to crash. So... Still got to dig into that. Night operations uh, with the remote ID together, it's looking what like, it's looking like what, um, um, yeah. It looks like that is going to be part of the 107 test coming up. And it's also from what I've read, haven't gotten into all the details, but it looks like 107 recertification is going to be much easier, probably going to be online from what I'm reading and you're not going to have to go back to a test center, which for me has been a nightmare because the test center I go to has been pretty much shut down for COVID. And they really don't want to take anybody in right now if you're not spending thousands of dollars to get a manned aircraft, private pilot's license, instrument rating, commercial license for manned aircraft. That's their priority. But then again, that's where they make money. All right. I'm going to dig into this a little deeper. Remote ID is definitely coming. Get ready for it. Still curious of what it's going to do for recreational pilots. It seems like that is going to be the end of recreational. You're going to be restricted to very confined areas if you're not part of the remote ID. I don't really agree with it, but it is what it is. You either play by the rules or you just don't get to do this. All right. Till next time, keep flying safe, and I am out of here. 
about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know 